Hey guys and welcome to Ubuntu uh, Lost Videos. Now in this video I'm going to show you a little bit about the terminal, how to use it, how to manipulate it, what you can do with it and so on. Let's go by my little sticky note here. What can, what can we use the terminal for? Uh, runs applications. The terminal is a lot more flexible than the actual application because applications are built with certain um, uh, type of attributes you can run it with and I'll show you eventually how to do that. And it's more professional. If you're a simple user, you don't have to do this. You don't have to play around with this section. But if you're here to learn a little extra about Ubuntu or Linux in general, this is a good place to start. And this gift, this terminal gives room for scripting. Scripting is basically a bunch of commands in a certain order to control your computer, in a sense. So let's go ahead and begin. This is what the terminal looks like. Uh, you can run the terminal from applications, accessories. You'll have termin terminal. I'll have the I have the terminator application, but from here, what can we do? What can we do here? Um, well, basically, run applications. Uh, that's the first part of my uh, outline. Is we can run applications. We can simply type in Firefox, press enter, and bam. Here comes Firefox. Uh, why would you want to do this? It's nothing really different. This is just one way to open it. Uh, but you will notice here that the terminal went back to the ability to type stuff. So if I wanted to type something else, I can go ahead and do it. Uh, the thing is, not all applications do this. Uh, for instance, if I run GIMP, the image editor, when I run GIMP, you see that it still hangs. And when GIMP loads all the way, it still hangs like this. <coughs> what this means is, that the terminal is busy. When the terminal is busy, when it doesn't give you, when it doesn't give you this uh, Chris at Chris laptop or user at laptop name format, and then the dollar sign, if it doesn't give you this format, then it's busy and you can't use the terminal. Right now, since it's like this, uh, it's being used. So if I basically exit the terminal, I exit GIMP as well. Which is a bad thing because if you're running applications to the terminal and you close your terminal accidentally, all the save or all your information is lost because you just closed everything at one time. So, how can we surpass this? How can we run applications in the background? Well, that's simple. You type in GIMP again. This time, press space and the and symbol, and press enter. With this and symbol, uh, GIMP has now been put into the background as the process four six five eight and see everything runs fine and now we have the terminal open again so we can use to whatever we want to do we can actually check the processes by doing ps negative sign or space negative sign capital A and in here we can actually see there's GIMP and there's that process number 4658 and there it is 4658 the same exact process number now let's say it hangs and you want to kill it um, what can you do? you can actually do kill Four six five eight, and there you go. I just killed uh, GIMP, and now it's basically turned off. Uh, this, of course, works if your window is gray and it's not responding to the exit like normal, and so on and so forth. And that's it. And that's how you would do that. Of course, you can also do kill all GIMP by the name. And it'll do the exact same thing right now. There's no GIMP process because I already killed it. So what else? What else can we do with the terminal? It's more flexible. How is it more flexible? Let's say, again, Firefox. We, we know how to launch it already. But if you do man for manual, Firefox, get a list. Um, Firefox doesn't have a manual. Oh, let's see, man GIMP. We get a list of extra attributes we can put to the very end of uh, GIMP. You can see the options right here. You can do help show GIMP command line options. You can do the version, you can print the version, you can do verbose mode, uh, new instances, you can start a whole new GIMP instance. You can do no interface and so on. There's just little things you can actually do and what these little symbols mean, the N or the minus A or the minus I, is if we go back and we do GIMP minus A, that minus A will contribute to whatever we just did a second ago, we, we saw in the menu, and it'll run in that mode. And it can be anything. Um, and there's GIMP right there, I'm going to go ahead and kill it. Well, didn't kill it, that just made it freeze. 
And see now it's gonna freeze up and I won't be able to exit out of it. Because this is oh, there we go. And this is what happens, of course. If you if you press Control Z to get out of the command, especially when it's running, your whole window will freeze, as I just showed you. So how do you get out of that? Of course you just do kill all, gimp, and done. And give it a little time. Let it kill and you can do it over and over again. I guess that's not gonna work. We can go ahead and press the exit button and it'll manually force quit it. There we go, that worked. Now, again, uh, we can do GIMP with different options. These options give it different characteristics. Now, we have more professional. Uh, what is it, what I mean, more professional? It just looks a lot more complicated. Why is it more professional? Well, in the sense of scripting, you can actually combine different applications together. I'll actually, I'll give you a small little program, or a small little script to give you an idea of what you can do. Uh, let me see, new document, regular file. I'm going to call this script, oops, wrong place. Call this script1. I'm going to open it, and this is how you begin every single script. And underneath, we have the ability to put in our own commands, our own, you know, section of what we want it to do. Uh, let's say, okay, let's go ahead and put in Firefox. Let's open Firefox and GIMP at the same time from this one script. I'm going to go ahead and save it. So now it recognizes it as a script, and there it is in the top right. Now if I, let me give you a few commands to know. Right now, so, right now if I do uh, PWD, I will know that I... I'll get this little thing here. This is where I am currently in my directory. I'm in the home slash Chris area. And if I do ls, I can see all the files in my current directory. I can actually change direction with cd into my desktop. That's where my file just went. And if I press ls again, there it is, my script one. I'm going to use a program called chmod with the attribute plus x on my script file to make it executable. And now if I do dot slash script one. Oops, I didn't actually tap that right. Do dot slash script one. You can see that GIMP opens and my Firefox responds. So I have now two things opening at the same time. The script goes from top to bottom. So every command from top to bottom is initiated. So basically just a simple pointless thing, I just opened two different windows at the same time. What else you can do is actually scripting uh, has certain commands that will kind of help you in a sense. Let's see, we want to run an application after so much time. We can do sleep uh, five seconds. This basically pauses the terminal, lets you wait a few seconds, and then returns to the terminal like so. And if we actually incorporate this into our uh, script here, Come on, Mr. Script. If we open our script, and I'm going to take off Firefox, I'm just going to open GIMP. If I do sleep 5, this will actually wait ten, 5 seconds before GIMP actually starts. And let's go ahead and do it again. We run script 1. We are waiting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there we go. And it starts GIMP again. And this is just very beginner stuff. You can do a lot of stuff. You can do if then statements. You can do while statements. You can do a lot of stuff with scripting. And that's what the idea is behind the terminal. Um, this is it. This is the terminal um, tutorial, I guess. Just a little intro. And thank you for watching. I will see you later.